The Gospel of Luke Since many have undertaken to set in order a narrative concerning those matters which have been fulfilled among us, even as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also, having traced the course of all things accurately from the first, to write to you in order most excellent, Theophilus, that you might know the certainty concerning the things in which you were instructed. There was, in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the priestly division of Abijah. He had a wife of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. They were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, but they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and they both were well advanced in years. Now it happened, while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to enter into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. The whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. An angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Zacharias was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Don't be afraid, Zacharias, because your request has been heard, and your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and he will drink no wine nor strong drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. He will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to prepare a people prepared for the Lord. Zacharias said to the angel, How can I be sure of this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. The angel answered him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. Behold, you will be silent and not able to speak until the day that these things will happen, because you didn't believe my words which will be fulfilled in their proper time. The people were waiting for Zacharias, and they marveled that he delayed in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple. He continued making signs to them and remained mute. It happened when the days of his service were fulfilled, he departed to his house. After these days, Elizabeth, his wife, conceived and she hid herself five months, saying, Thus has the Lord done to me in the days in which he looked at me to take away my reproach among men. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin pledged to be married to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, you highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was greatly troubled at the saying and considered what kind of salutation this might be. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and will call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. There will be no end to his kingdom. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, seeing I'm a virgin? The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore also the Holy One who is born from you will be called the Son of God. Behold, Elizabeth, your relative, also has conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for everything spoken by God is possible. Mary said, Behold, 
the handmaid of the Lord. Be it to me according to your word. The angel departed from her. Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. It happened when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting that the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She called out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came into my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of the things which have been spoken to her from the Lord. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has looked at the humble estate of his handmaid. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy is for generations of generations on those who fear him. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down princes from their thrones and has exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. He has sent the rich away empty. He has given help to Israel, his servant, that he might remember mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and his seed forever. Mary stayed with her about three months and then returned to her house. Now the time that Elizabeth should give birth was fulfilled, and she brought forth a son. Her neighbors and her relatives heard that the Lord had magnified his mercy towards her, and they rejoiced with her. It happened on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him Zacharias after the name of his father. His mother answered, Not so, but he will be called John. They said to her, There is no one among your relatives who is called by this name. They made signs to his father what he would have him called. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. They all marveled. His mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Fear came on all who lived around them, and all these sayings were talked about throughout all the hill country of Judea. All who heard them laid up in their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? The hand of the Lord was with him. His father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has visited and worked redemption for his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been from old, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy towards our fathers, to remember his holy covenant the oath which he spoke to Abraham our father, to grant to us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, should serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you, child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the dawn from on high will visit us to shine on those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child was growing and becoming strong in spirit and was in the desert until the day of his public appearance to Israel. Chapter 2 Now it happened in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to enroll themselves, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David 
to enroll himself with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him as wife, being pregnant. It happened while they were there that the day had come that she should give birth. She brought forth her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a feeding trough, because there was no room for them in the inn. There were shepherds in the same country, staying in the field, and keeping watch by night over their flock. Behold, an angel of the Lord stood by them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all the people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This is the sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth, lying in a feeding trough. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly army, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace. Good will toward men. It happened when the angels went away from them into the sky that the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem now and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They came with haste and found both Mary and Joseph, and the baby was lying in the feeding trough. When they saw it, they publicized widely the saying which was spoken to them about this child. All who heard it wondered at the things which were spoken to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these sayings, pondering them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, just as it was told them. When eight days were fulfilled for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus which was given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the days of their purification according to the law of Moses were fulfilled, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Behold, There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. He came in the Spirit into the temple when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, that they might do concerning him according to the custom of the law. Then he received him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now you are releasing your servant, Master, according to your word, in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light for revelation to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Joseph and his mother were marveling at the things which were spoken concerning him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is set for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which is spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with a husband seven years from her virginity, and she had been a widow for about eighty-four years, who didn't depart from the temple, worshiping with fastings and petitions night and day. Coming up at that very hour, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who were looking for redemption in Jerusalem. When they had accomplished all things that were according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. The child was growing and was becoming strong in spirit, being filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. His parents went every year to Jerusalem at the feast of the Passover. When he was twelve years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast, and when they had fulfilled the days— As they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. 
Joseph and his mother didn't know it, but supposing him to be in the company, they went a day's journey, and they looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances. When they didn't find him, they returned to Jerusalem looking for him. It happened, after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of his teachers, both listening to them and asking questions. All who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When they saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us this way? Behold, your father and I were anxiously looking for you. He said to them, Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? They didn't understand the saying which he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth. He was subject to them, and his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Chapter 3 Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, and Herod, being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Ituria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene, in the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. He came into all the region around the Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for remission of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make ready the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley will be filled. Every mountain and hill will be brought low. The crooked will become straight and the rough ways smooth. All flesh will see God's salvation. He said, therefore, to the multitudes who went out to be baptized by him, You offspring of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance, and don't begin to say among yourselves, We have Abraham for our father. For I tell you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe also lies at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that doesn't bring forth good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. The multitudes asked him, What then must we do? He answered them, He who has two coats, let him give to him who has none. He who has food, let him do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what must we do? He said to them, Collect no more than that which is appointed to you. Soldiers also asked him, saying, What about us? What must we do? He said to them, Extort from no one by violence, neither accuse anyone wrongfully. Be content with your wages. As the people were in expectation, and all men reasoned in their hearts concerning John, whether perhaps he was the Christ, John answered them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but he comes who is mightier than I, the latchet of whose sandals I am not worthy to loosen. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly cleanse his threshing floor and will gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then, with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. But Herod, the tetrarch, being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things which Herod had done, added this also to them all, that he shut up John in prison. Now it happened, when all the people were baptized, Jesus also had been baptized and was praying. The sky was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended in a bodily form as a dove on him. And a voice came out of the sky, saying, You are my beloved Son. In you I am well pleased. Jesus himself, when he began to teach, was about thirty years old, being the son, as was supposed, of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Janai, the son of Joseph, the son of Mattathias, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Esli, the son of Nagai, the son of Maath, 
the son of Mattathias, the son of Semyon, the son of Joseph, the son of Judah, the son of Joanan, the son of Resa, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the son of Neri, the son of Melki, the son of Adi, the son of Kosam, the son of Elmodom, the son of Er, the son of Jose, the son of Eliezer, the son of Joram, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonan, the son of Eliakim, the son of Melea, the son of Menan, the son of Matatha, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Salmon, the son of Nashon, the son of Aminadad, the son of Aram, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Serug, the son of Reu, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalalil, the son of Canaan, the son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Chapter 4 Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness for forty days, being tempted by the devil. He ate nothing in those days. Afterward, when they were completed, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. The devil, leading him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. The devil said to him, I will give you all this authority and their glory, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I want. If you therefore will worship before me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and you shall serve him only. He led him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, cast yourself down from here. For it is written, He will put his angels in charge of you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest perhaps you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answering said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. When the devil had completed every temptation, he departed from him until another time. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and news about him spread through all the surrounding area. He taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. He entered, as was his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. The book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. He opened the book and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to deliver those who are crushed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began to tell them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All testified about him and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Isn't this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will tell me this parable. Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done at Capernaum, Do also here in your hometown. He said, Most certainly, I tell you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. But truly, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, 
when the sky was shut up three years and six months, when a great famine came over all the land, Elijah was sent to none of them except to Zarephath in the land of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. There were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. They were all filled with wrath in the synagogue as they heard these things. They rose up, threw him out of the city, and led him to the brow of the hill that their city was built on, that they might throw him off the cliff. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. He came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee. He was teaching them on the Sabbath day, and they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. In the synagogue, there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Ah, what have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. When the demon had thrown him down in their midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm. Amazement came on all, and they spoke together one with another, saying, What is this word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. News about him went out into every place of the surrounding region. He rose up from the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. Simon's mother-in-law was afflicted with a great fever, and they begged him for her. He stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. Immediately she rose up and served them. When the sun was setting, all those who had any sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. Demons also came out from many, crying out and saying, You are the Christ, the Son of God. Rebuking him, he didn't allow them to speak because they knew that he was the Christ. When it was day, he departed and went into an uninhabited place, and the multitudes looked for him and came to him and held on to him so that he wouldn't go away from them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other cities also. For this reason I have been sent. He was preaching in the synagogues of Galilee. Chapter 5 Now it happened, while the multitude pressed on him and heard the word of God, that he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He entered into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. He sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, "'Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch.' Simon answered him, Master, we worked all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the net. When they had done this, they caught a great multitude of fish and their net was breaking. They beckoned to their partners in the other boat that they should come and help them. They came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But Simon Peter, when he saw it, fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, Lord. For he was amazed, and all who were with him, at the catch of fish which they had caught. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people alive. When they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. It happened while he was in one of the cities. Behold, there was a man full of leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him, saying, Lord, if you want to, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I want to be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him. He commanded him to tell no one. But go your way and show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing according to what Moses commanded for a testimony to them. But the report concerning him spread much more and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. But he withdrew himself into the desert and prayed. 
It happened on one of those days that he was teaching, and there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every village of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. The power of the Lord was with him to heal them. Behold, men brought a paralyzed man on a cot, and they sought to bring him in to lay before Jesus. Not finding a way to bring him in because of the multitude, they went up to the housetop and led him down through the tiles with his cot into the midst before Jesus. Seeing their faith, he said to them, Man, your sins are forgiven you. The scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this that speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, answered them, Why are you reasoning so in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins— He said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, arise and take up your cot and go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them and took up that which he was lying on and departed to his house, glorifying God. Amazement took hold on all, and they glorified God. They were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. After these things... He went out and saw a tax collector named Levy sitting at the tax office and said to him, Follow me. He left everything and rose up and followed him. Levy made a great feast for him in his house. There was a great crowd of tax collectors and others who were reclining with them. Their scribes and their Pharisees murmured against the disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, Those who are healthy have no need for a physician, but those who are sick do. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. They said to him, Why do John's disciples often fast and pray, likewise also the disciples of the Pharisees? But yours eat and drink. He said to them, Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. Then they will fast in those days. He also told a parable to them. No one puts a piece from a new garment on an old garment, or else he will tear the new, and also the piece from the new will not match the old. No one puts new wine into old wineskins, or else the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins, and both are preserved. No man, having drunk old wine, immediately desires new, for he says, The old is better. Chapter 6 Now it happened on the second Sabbath, after the first, that he was going through the grain fields. His disciples plucked the heads of grain and ate, rubbing them in their hands. But some of the Pharisees said to them, Why do you do that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath day? Jesus answering them said, Haven't you read what David did when he was hungry? He and those who were with him? How he entered into the house of God and took and ate the showbread and gave also to those who were with him, which is not lawful to eat except for the priests alone? He said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. It also happened on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. There was a man there, and his right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would heal on the Sabbath, that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts, and he said to the man who had the withered hand, Rise up and stand in the middle. He arose and stood. Then Jesus said to them, I will ask you something. Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save a life or to kill? He looked around at them all and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He did, and his hand was restored as sound as the other. But they were filled with rage and talked with one another about what they might do to Jesus. It happened in these days that he went out to the mountain to pray, 
and he continued all night in prayer to God. When it was day, he called his disciples, and from them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles, Simon, whom he also named Peter, Andrew his brother, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who also became a traitor. He came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, as well as those who were troubled by unclean spirits, and they were being healed. All the multitude sought to touch him, for power came out from him and healed them all. He lifted up his eyes to his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when men shall hate you, and when they shall exclude and mock you and throw out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for their fathers did the same thing to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe when men speak well of you, for their fathers did the same thing to the false prophets. But I tell you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you and pray for those who mistreat you. To him who strikes you on the cheek, offer also the other. And from him who takes away your cloak, Don't withhold your coat also. Give to everyone who asks, and don't ask him who takes away your goods to give them back again. As you would like people to do to you, do exactly so to them. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even the sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive back as much. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing back, and your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for He is kind toward the unthankful and evil. Therefore be merciful, even as your Father is also merciful. Don't judge, and you won't be judged. Don't condemn, and you won't be condemned. Set free, and you will be set free. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be given to you. For with the same measure you measure, it will be measured back to you. He spoke a parable to them. Can the blind guide the blind? Won't they both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone, when he is fully trained, will be like his teacher. Why do you see the speck of chaff that is in your brother's eye, but don't consider the beam that is in your own eye? Or how can you tell your brother, Brother, let me remove the speck of chaff that is in your eye, when you yourself don't see the beam that is in your own eye? You hypocrite! First, remove the beam from your own eye, And then you can see clearly to remove the speck of chaff that is in your brother's eye. For there is no good tree that brings forth rotten fruit, nor again a rotten tree that brings forth good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. For people don't gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. The good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings out that which is good. And the evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings out that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. 
Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things which I say? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you who he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug and went deep and laid a foundation on the rock. When the flood rose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it because it was founded on the rock. But he who hears and doesn't do is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream broke and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Chapter 7 After he had finished speaking in the hearing of the people, he entered into Capernaum. A certain centurion's servant who was dear to him was sick and at the point of death. When he heard about Jesus, he sent to him elders of the Jews, asking him to come and save his servant. When they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying, He is worthy for you to do this for him, for he loves our nation, and he built our synagogue for us. Jesus went with them. When he was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. Therefore, I didn't even think myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man placed under authority, having under myself soldiers. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned and said to the multitude who followed him, I tell you, I have not found such great faith, no, not in Israel. Those who were sent, returning to the house, found that the servant who had been sick was well. It happened soon afterwards that he went to a city called Nain. Many of his disciples, along with a great multitude, went with him. Now when he drew near to the gate of the city, behold, one who was dead was carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. Many people of the city were with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Don't cry. He came near and touched the coffin, and the bearers stood still. He said, Young man, I tell you, arise. He who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he gave him to his mother. Fear took hold of all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen among us. And God has visited his people. This report went out concerning him in the whole of Judea and in all the surrounding region. The disciples of John told him about all these things. John, calling to himself two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, saying, Are you the one who is coming, or should we look for another? When the men had come to him, they said, John the baptizer has sent us to you, saying, are you he who comes, or should we look for another? In that hour he cured many of diseases and plagues and evil spirits, and to many who were blind he gave sight. Jesus answered them, Go and tell John the things which you have seen and heard, that the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. Blessed is he who is not offended by me. When John's messengers had departed, he began to tell the multitudes about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man clothed in soft clothing? Behold, those who are gorgeously dressed and live delicately are in king's courts. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. For I tell you, among those who are born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the baptizer. Yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. When all the people and the tax collectors heard this, they declared God to be just having been baptized with John's baptism. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God, not being baptized by him themselves. 
To what then will I liken the people of this generation? What are they like? They are like children who sit in the marketplace and call to one another, saying, We piped to you and you didn't dance. We mourned and you didn't weep. For John the baptizer came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say he has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a gluttonous man and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Wisdom is justified by all her children. One of the Pharisees invited him to eat with him. He entered into the Pharisee's house and sat at the table. Behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that he was reclining in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of ointment, standing behind at his feet, weeping. She began to wet his feet with her tears, and she wiped them with the hair of her head, kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, This man, if he were a prophet, would have perceived who and what kind of woman this is who touches him, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. He said, Teacher, say on. A certain lender had two debtors. The one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they couldn't pay, he forgave them both. Which of them, therefore, will love him most? Simon answered, He, I suppose, to whom he forgave the most. He said to him, You have judged correctly. Turning to the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered into your house, and you gave me no water for my feet. But she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss, but she, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. You didn't anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven... The same loves little. He said to her, Your sins are forgiven. Those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? He said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Chapter 8 It happened soon afterwards that he went about through the cities and villages, preaching and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. With him were the twelve, and certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary, who was called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's steward, Susanna, and many others who served them from their possessions. When a great multitude came together and people from every city were coming to him, he spoke by a parable. The farmer went out to sow his seed. As he sowed, some fell along the road, and it was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the sky devoured it. Others fell on the rock, and as soon as it grew, it withered away because it had no moisture. Other fell amid the thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. Other fell into the good ground and grew and bought forth one hundred times. As he said these things, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Then his disciples asked him, What does this parable mean? He said, To you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest in parables, that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God, those along the road are those who hear, then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart, that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rock are they who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, but these have no root, who believe for a while, then fall away in time of temptation. That which fell among the thorns, these are those who have heard, And as they go on their way, they are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, 
and bring no fruit to maturity. That in the good ground, these are such as in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, hold it tightly, and bring forth fruit with patience. No one, when he has lit a lamp, covers it with a container or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a stand that those who enter in may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be revealed, nor anything secret that will not be known and come to light. Be careful, therefore, how you hear, for whoever has, to him will be given, and whoever doesn't have, from him will be taken away that which he thinks he has. His mother and brothers came to him, and they could not come near him for the crowd. It was told him by some, saying, Your mother and your brother stand outside, desiring to see you. But he answered them, My mother and my brothers are these who hear the word of God and do it. Now it happened on one of those days that he entered into a boat, himself and his disciples, and he said to them, Let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. A windstorm came down on the lake, and they were taking on dangerous amounts of water. They came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are dying. He awoke and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and it was calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? Being afraid, they marveled, saying to one another, Who is this, then, that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him? They arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is opposite Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, a certain man out of the city who had demons for a long time met him. He wore no clothes and didn't live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and with a loud voice said, What do I have to do with you, Jesus, you son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torment me. For Jesus was commanding the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For the unclean spirit had often seized the man. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and fetters. Breaking the bands apart, he was driven by the demon into the desert. Jesus asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered into him. They begged him that he would not command them to go into the abyss. Now there was there a herd of many pigs feeding on the mountain. And they begged him that he would allow them to enter into those. He allowed them. The demons came out from the man and entered into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Then those who fed them saw what had happened. They fled and told it in the city and in the country. People went out to see what had happened. They came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who saw it told them how he who had been possessed by demons was healed. All the people of the surrounding country of the Gadarenes asked him to depart from them, for they were very much afraid. He entered into the boat and returned, but the man from whom the demons had gone out begged him that he might go with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your house, and declare what great things God has done for you. He went his way, proclaiming throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. It happened, when Jesus returned, that the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. Behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. He fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come into his house, for he had an only daughter, about twelve years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes pressed against him. A woman who had a flow of blood for twelve years, who had spent all of her living on physicians and could not be healed by any, came behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak, and immediately the flow of her blood stopped. Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes press and jostle you, and you say, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Someone did touch me, for I perceived that power has gone out of me. When the woman saw that she was not hidden, 
she came trembling and falling down before him, declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason why she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. He said to her, Daughter, cheer up. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he still spoke, one from the ruler of the synagogue's house came saying to him, Your daughter is dead. Don't trouble the teacher. But Jesus, hearing it, answered him, Don't be afraid, only believe, and she will be healed. When he came to the house, he didn't allow anyone to enter in except Peter, John, James, the father of the child, and her mother. All were weeping and mourning her, but he said, Don't weep, she isn't dead but sleeping. They were ridiculing him, knowing that she was dead. But he put them all outside, and taking her by the hand, he called, saying, Child, arise! Her spirit returned, and she rose up immediately. He commanded that something be given to her to eat. Her parents were amazed, but he commanded them to tell no one what had been done. Chapter 9 He called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them forth to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He said to them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staffs, nor wallet, nor bread, nor money. Neither have two coats apiece. Into whatever house you enter, stay there and depart from there. As many as don't receive you, When you depart from that city, shake off even the dust from your feet for a testimony against them. They departed and went throughout the villages, preaching the good news and healing everywhere. Now Herod the Tetrarch heard of all that was done by him, and he was very perplexed because it was said by some that John had risen from the dead, and by some that Elijah had appeared, and by others that one of the old prophets had risen again. Herod said, John I beheaded, but who is this about whom I hear such things? He sought to see him. The apostles, when they had returned, told him what things they had done. He took them and withdrew apart into a deserted place of a city called Bethsaida. But the multitudes, perceiving it, followed him. He welcomed them and spoke to them of the kingdom of God, and he cured those who needed healing. The day began to wear away, and the twelve came and said to him, Send the multitude away, that they may go to the surrounding villages and farms and lodge and get food, for we are here in a deserted place. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. They said, We have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we should go and buy food for all these people. For they were about five thousand men. He said to his disciples, Make them sit down in groups of about fifty each. They did so and made them all sit down. He took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to the sky, he blessed them and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. They ate and were all filled. They gathered up twelve baskets of broken pieces that were left over. It happened as he was praying alone that the disciples were with him, and he asked them, Who do the multitudes say that I am? They answered, John the baptizer, but others say Elijah, and others that one of the old prophets is risen again. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered, The Christ of God. But he warned them and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and the third day be raised up. He said to all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever will lose his life for my sake, the same will save it. For what does it profit a man? if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits his own self. For whoever will be ashamed of me and of my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed, when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you the truth, there are some of those who stand here 
who will in no way taste of death until they see the kingdom of God. It happened about eight days after these sayings that he took with him Peter, John, and James and went up onto the mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face was altered and his clothing became white and dazzling. Behold, two men were talking with him who were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, but when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. It happened as they were parting from him that Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he said these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered into the cloud. A voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. When the voice came, Jesus was found alone. They were silent and told no one in those days any of the things which they had seen. It happened on the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, that a great multitude met him. Behold, a man from the crowd called out, saying, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son, for he is my only child. Behold, a spirit takes him. He suddenly cries out, and it convulses him so that he foams, and it hardly departs from him, bruising him severely. I begged your disciples to cast it out, and they couldn't. Jesus answered, Faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was still coming, the demon threw him down and convulsed him violently. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the boy and gave him back to his father. They were all astonished at the majesty of God. But while all were marveling at all the things which Jesus did, he said to his disciples, Let these words sink into your ears, for the Son of Man will be delivered up into the hands of men. But they didn't understand this saying. It was concealed from them that they should not perceive it, and they were afraid to ask him about this saying. There arose an argument among them about which of them was the greatest. Jesus, perceiving the reasoning of their hearts, took a little child and set him by his side and said to them, Whoever receives this little child in my name receives me. Whoever receives me receives him who sent me. For whoever is least among you all, this one will be great. John answered, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he doesn't follow with us. Jesus said to him, Don't forbid him, for he who is not against us is for us. It came to pass, when the days were near, that he should be taken up. He intently set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. They went and entered into a village of the Samaritans so as to prepare it for him. They didn't receive him because he was traveling with his face set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from the sky and destroy them just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them. You don't know of what kind of spirit you are, for the Son of Man didn't come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. They went to another village. As they went on the way, a certain man said to him, I want to follow you wherever you go, Lord. Jesus said to him, The foxes have holes and the birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, allow me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead, but you go and announce the kingdom of God. Another also said, I want to follow you, Lord, but first allow me to say goodbye to those who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, No one, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. 
Chapter 10 Now after these things, the Lord also appointed seventy others and sent them two by two ahead of him into every city and place where he was about to come. Then he said to them, The harvest indeed is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore to the Lord of the harvest that he may send out laborers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry no purse, no wallet, nor sandals. Greet no one on the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. If the Son of Peace is there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in that same house, eating and drinking the things they give. For the laborer is worthy of his wages. Don't go from house to house. Into whatever city you enter, and they receive you, eat the things that are set before you. Heal the sick who are therein, and tell them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But into whatever city you enter, and they don't receive you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust from your city that clings to us we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near to you. I tell you, it will be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which were done in you, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes, but it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the judgment than for you. You, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me. Whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. He said to them, I saw Satan having fallen like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing will in any way hurt you. Nevertheless, don't rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. In that same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for so it was well-pleasing in your sight. Turning to the disciples, he said, All things have been delivered to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son and he to whomsoever the Son desires to reveal him. Turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see the things which you see, and didn't see them, and to hear the things which you hear, and didn't hear them. Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Jesus answered, A certain man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who both stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. By chance, a certain priest was going down that way. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite also, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he traveled, came where he was. When he saw him, he was moved with compassion, came to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. 
he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii and gave them to the host and said to him, Take care of him. Whatever you spend beyond that, I will repay you when I return. Now, which of these three do you think seemed to be a neighbor to him who fell among the robbers? He said, He who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. It happened as they went on their way. He entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. She had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she came up to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister left me to serve alone? Ask her, therefore, to help me. Jesus answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. Mary has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. Chapter 11. It happened that when he finished praying in a certain place, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John also taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. Bring us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. He said to them, Which of you, if you go to a friend at midnight and tell him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has come to me from a long journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within will answer and say, Don't bother me. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give it to you. I tell you, although we will not rise and give it to him because he is a friend, yet because of his persistence, he will get up and give him as many as he needs. I tell you, keep asking, and it will be given to you. Keep seeking, and you will find. Keep knocking, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives He who seeks finds. To him who knocks, it will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he won't give him a snake instead of a fish, will he? Or if he asks for an egg, he won't give him a scorpion, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? He was casting out a demon, and it was mute. It happened when the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the multitudes marveled. But some of them said, He casts out demons by Beelzebul. But if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if I by the finger of God cast out demons then the kingdom of God has come to you. When the strong man, fully armed, guards his own dwelling, his goods are safe. But when someone stronger attacks him and overcomes him, he takes from him his whole armor in which he trusted and divides his spoils. He that is not with me is against me. He who doesn't gather with me scatters. The unclean spirit When he has gone out of the man, passes through dry places, seeking rest, and finding none, he says, I will turn back to my house from which I came out. When he returns, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes seven other spirits more evil than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. The last state of that man becomes worse than the first. It came to pass, as he said these things, a certain woman out of the multitude lifted up her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts which nursed you. But he said, On the contrary, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. When the multitudes were gathering together to him, he began to say, 
This is an evil generation. It seeks after a sign. No sign will be given to it but the sign of Jonah, the prophet. For even as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will also the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South will rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and will condemn them, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, one greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will stand up in the judgment with this generation and will condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, one greater than Jonah is here. No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a cellar or under a basket, but on a stand, that those who come in may see the light. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body is also full of light. But when it is evil, your body also is full of darkness. Therefore, see whether the light that is in you isn't darkness. If therefore your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly full of light, as when the lamp with its bright shining gives you light. Now as he spoke, a certain Pharisee asked him to dine with him. He went in and sat at the table. When the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed himself before dinner. The Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees cleanse the outside of the cup and of the platter, but your inward part is full of extortion and wickedness. You foolish ones, didn't he who made the outside make the inside also? But give for gifts to the needy those things which are within, and behold, all things will be clean to you. But woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and every herb, but you bypass justice and the love of God. You ought to have done these and not to have left the other undone. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the best seats in the synagogues and the greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you're like hidden graves and the men who walk over them don't know it. One of the lawyers answered him, Teacher, in saying this, you insult us also. He said, Woe to you lawyers also, for you load men with burdens that are difficult to carry, and you yourselves won't even lift one finger to help carry those burdens. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. So you testify and consent to the works of your fathers, for they killed them and you build their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send to them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation, from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be required of this generation. Woe to you lawyers! For you took away the key of knowledge. You didn't enter in yourselves, and those who were entering in, you hindered. As he said these things to them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to be terribly angry and to draw many things out of him, lying in wait for him and seeking to catch him in something he might say that they might accuse him. Chapter 12 Meanwhile, when a multitude of many thousands had gathered together, so much so that they trampled on each other, he began to tell his disciples, first of all, Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. But there is nothing covered up that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the darkness will be heard in the light. What you have spoken in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. I tell you, my friends, don't be afraid of those who kill the body and after that have no more that they can do. But I will warn you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after he is killed, has power to cast into Gehenna. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Aren't five sparrows sold for two Assyria coins? 
Not one of them is forgotten by God, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Therefore, don't be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. I tell you, everyone who confesses me before men, him will the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he who denies me in the presence of men will be denied in the presence of these angels of God. Everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but those who blaspheme against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When they bring you before the synagogues, the rulers, and the authorities, don't be anxious how or what you will answer or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you in that same hour what you must say. One of the multitude said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who made me a judge or an arbitrator over you? He said to them, Beware, keep yourselves from covetousness, for a man's life doesn't consist of the abundance of the things which he possesses. He spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth abundantly. He reasoned within himself, saying, What will I do, because I don't have room to store my crops? He said, This is what I'll do. I will pull down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. I will tell my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You foolish one, tonight your soul is required of you. The things which you have prepared, whose will they be? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. He said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, don't be anxious for your life, what you will eat, nor yet for your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They don't sow. They don't reap. They have no warehouse or barn, and God feeds them. How much more valuable are you than birds? Which of you, by being anxious, can add a cubit to his height? If then you aren't able to do even the least things, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They don't toil, neither do they spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if this is how God clothes the grass of the field, which today exists and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? Don't seek what you will eat or what you will drink, neither be anxious. For the nations of the world seek after all of these things. But your Father knows that you need these things. But seek God's kingdom, and all these things will be added to you. Don't be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that which you have, and give gifts to the needy. Make for yourselves purses which don't grow old, a treasure in the heavens that doesn't fail, where no thief approaches neither moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your waist be dressed and your lamps burning. Be like men watching for their Lord when he returns from the marriage feast, that when he comes and knocks, they may immediately open to him. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord will find watching when he comes. Most certainly I tell you that he will dress himself and make them recline, and will come and serve them. They will be blessed if he comes in the second or third watch and finds them so. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what hour the thief was coming, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore be ready also, for the Son of Man is coming in an hour that you don't expect him. Peter said to him, Lord, are you telling this parable to us? Or to everybody? The Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord will set over his household to give them their portion of food at the right times? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord will find doing so when he comes. Truly, I tell you, 
that he will set him over all that he has. But if that servant says in his heart, My Lord delays his coming, and begins to beat the men servants and maid servants, and to eat and drink and to be drunken, then the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he isn't expecting him, and in an hour that he doesn't know, and will cut him in two, and place his portion with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his Lord's will and didn't prepare nor do what he wanted will be beaten with many stripes. But he who didn't know and did things worthy of stripes will be beaten with few stripes. To whoever much is given, of him will much be required. And to whom much was entrusted, of him more will be asked. I came to throw fire on the earth. I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how distressed I am until it is accomplished. Do you think that I have come to give peace in the earth? I tell you no, but rather division. For from now on, there will be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against her mother, mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He said to the multitudes also, When you see a cloud rising from the west, immediately you say, A shower is coming, and so it happens. When a south wind blows, you say, There will be a scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites! You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky, but how is it that you don't interpret this time? Why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? For when you are going with your adversary before the magistrate, try diligently on the way to be released from him, lest perhaps he drag you to the judge, and the judge deliver you to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you will by no means get out of there until you have paid the very last penny.